You could just like ah, could splice it in half. I'll splice. That's you know. Yeah. We shorten no, things but... here in America. We try to abbreviate. Do our too thing. Too far, honestly. Abbreviations actually go too far. It, it tilts me when people just like use single letters to say words. <laughs> I won't go down that rabbit hole, but let it be known, it tilts me. But it's actually interesting to see with uh, these two games so far that both teams have actually put quite a high uh, high value on the first pick Chen. You know, like, uh, we, you, I haven't seen a lot of first phase Chen's like really popping off, but these lads, they're really into it. And you asked earlier about the AA, it, do, do I like it? I think it's probably one of the most underrated position fives for its laning presence that amount of damage that it can pump out especially if you have a carry that can lay it any stun into your cold feet to get that proc to go off and additionally if you obviously the, the chilling touch spam so strong and uh yeah the uh, the only question or query i have is simply chen naturally obviously the big hill boy the big aura man but he tries to apply pressure through having his creeps pangalir on the other hand he happily clears out waves very very cleanly so it, you're not gonna see a chen that has this insane push potential but it'll be more of just a i'm a hill my boys so i'm gonna tp them around the map just because of this pango being an answer to him now this chen feels very cis specific to me um yeah you know i i don't see it in china i know i always compare everything that i cast to china it's just that's where i get my most reps in but it's like that's not a hero we see all too often in china there are a couple teams that do play it every now and then but it's yeah. not something that we're seeing contested in the in the first pick this you know the way that we've seen here so far yeah i, I fully agree like I, I i've dabbled in looking at other regions and stuff and chen yeah it really isn't a, a hot hero but i think it kind of boils down to the idea that i think cis as a region they lack remaining. the kind of a way to end a game or just to be cohesive enough to kind of push through some of that early aggression that kind of comes out from these teams and i think chen over was a hero it does fix a lot of these problems you have that tp to always get someone in the fight you're going to always be able to be a little bit tankier so i think it plays well into the kind of the meta that cis has developed for itself which is the how do we go high ground how do we pressure the map and yeah if it simplifies your game it does but I think Fly to Moon, they. Ten seconds. I, I am worried. Simply. Oh, oh, wow. This is a. All right, all right. Boss tier pick. So basically, my point for Fly to Moon was they currently have no one who happily wants to stand at the front, who wants to really be that, that, that real tanky boy. And I think the biggest issue they have is also the fact they have no real good lockdown. Shaman can never really get his shackles off in this game due to Disruptor with his massive Ten range on Glimpse, going to gonna Glimpse him. You then have a Ricky who he likes to pump out his Five damage seconds. playing around the stuns of his team. He likes to be a little bit elusive. Right now, they can't. So this bounty pick, bounty hunter naturally, with the bit like if it's a core bounty hunter, which it probably will be, phase, drum, all this move speed naturally plays super well into low core, uh, low stun heroes. Additionally, you then have the trek against the uh, the Ricky. Yeah, I think Hellraisers, they've, they've bossed here, picked this bounty hunter big fan i think one of the last times i saw bounty hunter uh that i can remember and again i'm gonna do it again was in the chinese region it was a one position oh, pick i yep. think was played by freeze who i believe his name is Kama right now um sure. and it, it was great i, I could yep. we could this be a one bounty two puck and then can we see like a three slardar come out of nowhere or is that just like not the pick anymore he... I think in this position, with the flexibility of these heroes, there's so many different variations. I think right now, I would like to see the mid hero be a bit more of like a win condition, a way to mm -hmm. go into the high ground. Because right now, Hellraisers, even though they have this ability to move around the map and be aggressive, they also have the same issue as Flight to Moon, which is like, how do we actually start a fight? Who's our front line? Of course, Bounty Hunter is technically that, in terms of he's so quick, he'll be in your face. He'll be tanking the stuns, yada, yada, yada. Like, he's going to have a good time. But the issue is fighting mean have that last pick. So, I think, Horrors, they need to cover themselves from a potential Meepo, for example, or even the Broodmother, or one of these kind of more <sighs> gulp heroes that are just going <laughs> to ruin your day, especially. But I guess the only caveat to that would be Puck does fare really well against Meepo once you get to, like, the Deso, 
and that kind of right click build because of course with the let's say if you even get to like level 25 for example you got the rapid fire even if you don't have that simply just call him with the, the face shift attack you can kill a meepo but you know, maybe like a Medusa for Hellraisers, just slap him in the mid lane, just let him exist within the game to secure your mid to late game. Also gives you that push potential with the Manta, maybe even that early Rapier, but go for Life Stealer instead. Ooh. I... Which means go for offlane it. Bounty Hunter. No, I mean, it yeah. just means offlane Bounty Hunter. That, that, that's, and that's kind of what I started to expect once I saw that the Phantom Lancer was banned, that that's what Fly to Moon were expecting. Uh, you know, yeah. not that safe lane um, bounty hunter, which I got really excited for very quickly, no, yeah, but I uh, got, got a little too ahead of myself. But then technically as well, this could also just simply be like, it could also just be a, a Roger bounty hunter with a phonic puck, right? Like, oh, don't do that to me. Yeah, no, it is all phonic. All right, Whew. Whew. all right, cool. But fly to moon it's the classic pick right you look at your draft like we said already how do you frontline how do you really start team fights who's your boy what's the hero that always answers those questions kunker he is the lad he's the guy you pick when your draft looks a little bit wonky now you see this kunky you're like hmm damn that is a solid looking draft only concern though it's another melee boy you've got three melee cores against a puck so is it gonna be strong maybe but I think Hellraisers, they've drafted themselves a beautiful, like a, mwah, a deluxe draft. And I'm going to go bold second game prediction, Hellraisers again. Well, you know, you are one for one so far. So you should feel oh, yeah. good about uh, you know, your yeah. prediction rate. If uh, you know anybody's in chat, well, it is a two minute delay. So I don't know if they can get their bets in unless they're live betting. But this is Paramatch, so I'm not sure how their website works. Frantically uh, types. Bet on, <laughs> bet on uh, Hellraisers. You know, Should put my salary my on it. Oh, damn, we'll be getting uh, two pound fifty back in return. Yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, there's actually something I wanted to say um, about you know you were talking about those gulp picks. Um, yeah, it's it's so crazy to me that no matter the meta, those exist. Of course, it's, it's like nuts. The, I think the main point is like when you draft, it's so like as someone sitting back here, like we didn't we didn't really make predictions in this draft. We just kind of spoke about it. That's fair. That's fine. You're allowed to have different styles now and again, chop and change. But when you look at the the heroes progress, it's so easy when you don't have the pressure of the timer of the the pick your team to not like see certain heroes. And I think in general, when you draft, you if you've picked the one wrong hero and it makes your draft a little bit wonky it opens up for punishment and of course punishment doesn't always become meepo huskar brood they're like the classics punishment in my eyes is like picking a storm when you have an aa oracle support duo or picking a medusa when they have literally no man uh, diffusal buying mana draining type hero or reliable stuns as well like the it's that boss gulp pick which is just on when your first pick you can pick it on pick 10 clear, or if your like second pick you, you can pick it at the end of your of your draft obviously in, in ultimate last pick but it's such a key uh factor that exists within all of dota and it will it will never change it's it's kind of the beautiful part of drafting yeah it, i'm i feel like there's nobody who doesn't pick up <laughs> uh defusal anymore it feels like every hero or uh, every one position in the moment is just like i could do defusal <laughs> I, 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 I could dig this. that. Yeah, it, it, just, I think, it like, seems like it's everybody. It's it's nuts. <laughs> so, like I think there's there's a there's a nice list of heroes with defusal. Like you got Void, Ricky, Juggernaut can work it in if he wants to. Phantom Lancer, Life Stealer, Phantom Lancer. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, Life Stealer does it sometimes. I feel like, but it's usually like a Heaven's Halberd. We'll see come out yeah. from uh, a Life Stealer. Yeah, I've personally never seen the Life Stealer buy it, but. I'm down. I'm, I should. Why? I'm, no. Lysander should never buy it, in my opinion. You either go Deso or you go Maelstrom. Don't he, watch he Tier is 3 like the... China then, because those tournaments, Matt. I've seen it, and it's. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. But he is the one hero that should be, like, except from the Diffusal patch. Like, he he, fought, he does so well with the Maelstrom into Halberd or into this Deso build. And this game, for example, Ricky, high armor hero, Kunkur, tanky hero, Pango. It can be tanky on occasion, depending on his shield crash. Like he, 
also with his build he might itemize to be a little bit tankier i i, I think in this game i'd really like to see the deso build armlet deso from the from the life stealer just to be able to be a bit tankier the issue to that is simply the aa buying armlet into aa is kind of a little bit sketchy so we'll see but i just like the idea of this big explosive damage eat through the armor of the ricky kill him within a coil and then you kind of look at fly to moon and go and now what what are you gonna do you're a wreck he's dead so we'll see maybe has he got a quick buy oh no he's look he's looked like he's going for the maelstrom i take everything back you should go for a maelstrom <laughs> uh, that's how it works right Just no i it resolves you got it <laughs> it works out. Nice, nice. i'll give it to you I'm, I'm so excited for this bounty hunter too i remember there was one game i was covering with mo and we watched mm -hmm. a bounty hunter steal eight thousand gold <laughs> with Janata, and it like made a difference. It was like, yeah, yeah, you, you really made the split there on the net worth. I, I was so surprised at how much he was able to pull off, but and it, and it was a core bounty hunter. But I believe it was the one position. It might have even been right. that China game where we saw Freeze do it. Kasani? Oh, uh, Kasani. Taking a lot of damage there. Just to be clear, if I call Actually, you if you quickly look at I the mid-dire tower quickly, a play that some mid-players are actually making is they come to mid if they're in melee core with a Quelling Blade, and they eat like this tree. Because the whole idea is you stand here, right? And you block to see if there's vision in this area. So if you eat this tree with your Quelling Blade at the start of the game, they can't, they can't actually check to see if there's a ward there or not. Fun fact for you. Same again if you eat the, the tree on the other side, on the bottom side. They can't check here for this ward if you quell this tree. Oh, I'll have to uh, use that in my tier 2 games and get told what am I doing. Or my, uh, sorry, not tier 2 games, my uh, 2k games was what I wanted yeah, I was to say. say. Tier 2, Dan, you've, you, you've rated I've, yourself quite highly there. I've now. grown, <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, Take the analysis away, brother. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that's one of the reasons I stay away from it is is definitely that number. Oh, I it, see, I see. It is attached to you, uh, oh man, in ways like that I can't even compare. You... Yeah, yeah, like a bad smell. That's rough. actually, yeah. yeah. I'm, the, I'm the kid at school where they go, Ugh, what is that? <laughs> have, you, have you been to the gym? No, it's just my natural odor, bro. <laughs> this is my man stench. I just uh, I thought this would be better than cologne. Oh, God. No, thank you. <laughs> Kasani taking a lot of damage mid. Iceberg diving this tier one at the moment. <laughs> hey, he's currently bodying him. Look at the CS6 oh. and all. Yeah, he'll eat the tide break, uh, bringer in. Uh, well, the torrent will stop that south. So Kasani, well, you've got a tango in 20 seconds. But you're going to need to survive when this uh, south, second south gets brought out to you. But Iceberg, all of a sudden, he takes a lot of damage. And now the Tidebringer comes in once again. He'll try to land that Torrent. And luckily, Kasani this time wise enough to phase shift and not get hit. Yeah, both mids are bringing out their, bringing out their additional sounds. But I think overall, it's perfectly fine for the Kunko. As soon as he gets, like, double Bracer, he's going to be fine. He's already got one Bracer complete. So, not too much concern for the Kunko. Uh, that could have been a lot but worse, actually. But I think an interesting point is actually Roger playing the Chen. Got that position for Chen. Don't see it that often, but yeah, if you want to pick it up, it allows for a lot more aggression. Position 5 Chens, they naturally feel pressured into their lane, but as I say, I could even posh getting jump bottom. Doesn't have any stuns to cancel the TP. So he gets out. But no, yeah, the position 4 Chen, going back to that one, it's like you get to itemize a little bit more aggressively. Potentially, he could go for the Helmet Dominator after the mech. He could also go for. Maybe an early solar crest to unlock Roshan a bit earlier to get that timing going. Uh, so many more options, I think, with the position Ooh. for Chen. Yeah, and there goes a courier. Always want to fly. Just... And the sentry on it. Oh. Yeah, not, not looking good. Not looking good at all. And now, going to this Chen, uh, you know, you're talking about how he gets that mech. It, it's so much quicker, it feels like, because of the fact that four positions these days are picking up that headdress to start the game. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you pick up the headdress, and mech only costs 1900. Oh, some weird way of saying numbers. Yeah, 1950 gold. So, uh, yeah, like you're, you're gonna be able to get it quite quickly. He's already close to his chainmail, and maybe get a kill, get maybe a tower at some point, and yeah, there, there's your mech coming in. Especially if you're involved in that first butter, you do get that first blood kill, which I don't mm, know if we're gonna sure. see that here. We could see it on Always on a Fly. He is 
definitely very susceptible early on. You've got that level two in the Janata. You take a wrong step towards, you know, this jungle area right here, and you can find yourself very dead. Okay, more importantly, if we have a quick look at mid lane right now, we've got Iceberg, who had to do the Walk of Shame back to his base. Uh, and then Kasani already hitting level five. Pretty much two levels on Iceberg right now. Kasani just doing absolute work. This lane looked like it was Iceberg favored at the start. Especially with that initial damage take taken pre bounty rune, but Sunny coming in, yep, one level ahead of the Kunker. Yeah, such a contrast to what we saw just a minute and a half ago. You know, it was very iceberg favored, and now it's gone the opposite way. And then to look over towards top, you know, is this a game where? Oh no! Funny... Kasa we take it all back, iceberg god. Oh, one more shot. He should. He's got the bottom. Tidebringer's there. Yeah, he gets the kill, and then over bottom, Poshka dies to General. Can they get one in return onto Aloha Dance? He'll use the Rage. Does he have the damage? He needs one more shot with the Salve. It's enough to keep Aloha Dance alive through the Rage, and now the Shackle turnaround. General Swashbuckle gets the Disarm, and Nyx, he dies. They might even lose the Chen Top, but I, I look for a second, and Roger is sitting all the way back towards the tower, making sure he's not a goner. Dude, cast a curse, man. We're like, damn, Kasani's done absolute work in this lane. And then he gets caught by the X, doesn't dodge the torrent with the uh, the phase shift, and bada bing, bada boom, you're gone. You're dead. Lane's back to normal. Kunkun's back in the in, in the lane. Gets the double bracer, loving life. And that brings oh, him right back experience. Actually, ahead experience-wise. Yeah. Great sure. job for Iceberg. And it does something extra. For the but I think it's top player with... Oh, yeah. no, no, go for it. I, I wasn't going to say saying. anything important. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe I wasn't either. I was going to say no. It's, uh, <laughs> I think it's mainly about this top lane. How can they pressure this Ricky and progress? Like, you want to turn this Chen early mech into something useful. Life Stealer, naturally, again, we said in the last game, he wants to farm for a little bit. It doesn't really matter that he died bottom. It's for sure annoying, but it still kind of fits to his game plan of I'm just going to sit and exist. So it's how this top lane can maybe take an early tower and then sweep across the map as a, a big pickoff potential of just Chen Bounty just pushing down towers, running at heroes. Now, is this a utility bounty hunter game? Like, sometimes we'll see, like, a Guardian Greaves, you know, a Solar Crest, but we're already getting the mech on a Roger, so, you know, is that... Are you still going for something like Guardian Greaves, or what's the build looking like here for a bounty hunter as bottom? They lose Maposhka, they look over at Nyx. Can they get a second kill onto this Ice Stewart? That would really slow him down. They just need one more shot, and they'll get it. Oh. Coming in from Aloha Dance, and, you know, this is the complete opposite of what we saw Nyx dealing with in the previous game. And then Kasani, you're coming top. I don't. I didn't see if he missed that Dream Coil, but it wasn't latched on to anybody, so he must have. Whiffed it. I think the positioning of bot lane, like, you have to just play deep in your lane if... The Shaman Pangolet, it's the same lane as the last game. It has a lot of damage if you're out by yourself. And the issue here is simply the disruptor oversteps his mark, steps out into the lane, boom, instantly gets caught, picked off. Nixon always tries to come for a recovery kill and doesn't work. And you're going back to your point with the bounty hunter. I would like to see him go for phase drama, be a little bit more of a damage deal. I think if he goes for utility, they're going to have a big lack of damage, especially with the Kunko, with the run buff. You need to be able to find ways to kill heroes. And if you try and go for utility on Bounty, utility on the Chen, and you're layering that with a lifestyle who wants to farm for 20 minutes, like you're going to really just lack any ability to make moves. So phase, drum on Bounty Hunter, good to go. Looking at this Bounty Hunter 3 in the Janata, he just continues to only use it on the Ricky. I'm, I would love to know at this moment how much gold he's stolen already. <laughs> It's not that it's a huge number, but it's definitely disruptive, and now he's got track, so this is a moment, like, obviously the game so far, it's 5 to nothing yeah. in favor of Fly to Moon. Look at bottom, though. But Instant TP. Bottom. And we take a look. There's the track on Aloha Dance. Nyx gets the kill, so they've got that track kill to start it off immediately. Funnick moving forward. Looks over general. Oh, Jesus. The, the Run it in, Funnick. Yeah, there's no reason not to. If you could survive the tower, one more shot with the Janata would get the kill. He gets the disarm out. Can he get there? This might be too deep, but he's also got the Shuriken to finish him off. Two track kills there for the side of Hellraisers, and right away, that brings them into the net worth lead. Bounty Hunter ends up losing his life to the tower. and uh, yeah, just wanted to reset himself. He knew he didn't have TP up. He'd be off the map for, like, maybe a minute 30, so... Yeah, just kill himself off. Give a little, kind of, 
There's a little bit of golf angle there, sure, but overall, really good moves from uh, Funnick. And this is the thing about the bounty hunter. Like, if he gets to that lane, it's so hard for anyone to do anything to him because what's your stun? The shaman? All right, cool. Other than that, maybe the the torrent, uh, the, the X torrent from the Kunker, but you're never going to rotate on mid as a bounty hunter. You're going to punish the side lane, so. And then abusing the fact you have the 10 in your team instantly comes top, which means, yeah, really good moves right now coming out from, from Funnick. And the, and the boys of Hellraisers. And they do see Funnick with the sentry. So Tricks of the Trade already used. That'll mean that they can get the track out. Janata hits early. Iceberg coming over, though. The X as well as the boat on a Funnick. So he might have stepped a little bit too far forward as he gets hit up real hard. Ends up dead. Can they at least get this track kill? It really doesn't look like it as Vtune. He will put down an Ironwood tree to eat. And now look wow. over at Roger. Right, they've got the cold feet, Tricks of the Trade once again. V-Tune very slow, but there's the Chilling Touch shot coming through and a Blink Strike from V-Tune. However, they won't commit on Roger to try and get the skill into the chat. Dude, I am cursing Hellraiser so much, honestly. Like, Kasani, wow, Kasani, the mid lane, whoop, dies. Funnick, the moose, wow, dies. I've really got to close my mouth, actually, in some of these moments. I, mean, I think a lot of betters are uh, getting upset at just and continuing getting riled. prediction. The thing is, I didn't factor in Funnick diving underneath a tower when, without any vision advantage, knowing that there's TPs up. Like, I didn't factor that in into my, my, my analysis. That's not meant to be a thing. Yeah, it definitely seemed like a, a bit of an odd positioning. Like, they knew v was there, they knew that they could get the track off, but it, it just seemed like an odd setup where he put himself in a spot to get caught like that. And now no, yeah, exactly. moving forward on a v -tune. They've got Slap the track him. on him, and do they have the damage blink strike away? Funnick looking forward, and he'll throw the Janata out onto the Kunkka. He still wants to focus on a V-Tune, who will die to neutrals on that three stack over there. Iceberg moving forward on a Roger, who is now out of mana. They've got him tracked up. He'll get the kill on a Roger, and now can they trade is the question. Janata comes in again, and Iceberg really just free to move away from this exchange as over bottom... They get the kill and always want to fly, or actually over mid. That was... mid, yeah. Kasani DD just kind of calls the poor AA and just uh, slaps him, up, slaps him up a little bit. But yeah, I think Funnick, as soon as he's not diving tier one towers, he does highlight how strong he is as a hero. And instantly again with the TP bottom, trying to make a play onto Shadow Shaman. One of the squishy heroes at boom track. Yeah, they've got That's the static storm. Uh, Nix, you need to be careful. You're getting really low. To let yourself die like that just seems kind of irresponsible, and they lose Aloha Dance in general, but they lose the Knicks, who can't benefit from, say, another kill here. Ana always want to oh, fly Kunka. with the track Kunka, on him. Kunka at... coming over. Cold Feet. Funnick now is to try and get out of the Cold Feet before it procs, but I don't think it's going to matter anyways. He gets pulled back into the boat, and he ends up dead. There's the phase drum. This man is... He doesn't really care. I think... Yeah, he gets three kills, he dies, he's like, cool, nice, your Kunkka's bottom, I'm taking your top tower. Like, this, yeah, Bounty Hunter's forcing a lot of movement around this map right now. Next, though, he's the one struggling. He keeps dying, like, they jump him, the jump stops, and he then still dies. It's, like, kind of unfortunate right now, coming out from Nyx, but... It's think gonna the, be hunt. The good thing is, though, that, like, they're getting a bunch of track kills. Like, yes, Phonix lost his life, diving yeah. these towers are going in real deep, but he still gained a thousand gold off that exchange. Oh, yeah, he doesn't care at all. I think the only concerning point is simply every time he's died, he's always died to the Kunkka, which means if you look at the Kunkka's net worth, though, he's having a, a peachy time. Phase, armlet, he's well on his way to his next item. Like, you kind of don't want the Kunkka to have a good game because he is the factor that... Like, you pick him to fit, solve your draft, right? You need to have control, damage, frontline, teamfight, everything. This is what Kunkka provides. When you give him a good game, it amplifies that. And it means his team doesn't, doesn't have to have a great start to the game because they can play behind this kind of unit of a Kunkka. And as much as Bounty Hunter, cool, great. He's having a great spot. Blast. Coming in under Roger. And they'll have the boat followed up as well as having the Ricky here to help get that kill. But the Static Storm out onto the Ricky. He needs to be careful. He's still silenced up. And Nyx coming through, trying to get the damage to get this kill into the Ricky, but now he's about half health and needs to run away with Rage. Rolling Thunder comes in, bounces off. No coil, though. Maposhka once again. So they'll get the kill into the Disruptor. They look over at Funnick, but the silence sits on a three. So can Funnick clean this up? Kasani gets the kill and always on a fly. They'll look over at the Bounty Hunter, who does have Janata. 
X through onto the puck. I think Funix looking for an opportunity to go in and maybe finish off Iceberg, but he needs to be careful because General obviously has the damage to kill him with a swashbuckle. He's moving in so low, oh, and funny. there's the sentry. Just doesn't expect the vision to be there. And now they've got the torrent as well as the infest. Nyx needs to run. Iceberg low. They've got the shackle out. Hand of God comes through. Iceberg ends up dead to Nyx. And now they're cleaning up. Aloha Dance falls. They've got the Dream Coil again. This is such a long fight. Ice Blast comes over the top as it hits over to Roger as well as Nyx. But they get the kill in a general. Four heroes gone on Fly to Moon. And Hellraisers, seemingly holding on by a thread, kind of win that exchange. It, whew, the start of that fight was kind of uh, kind of sketch, where you had the you had fight a moon. They were, they were taking the fight. The bounty hunter wasn't even there. If the bounty hunter was at the start of the fight, it would have been a, a big wipe for Hellraisers, like just winning it. But yeah, I think just the overall delay, and then eventually when you come in, like you, we have to respect the vision that you get from the track. Like you, he tracked up multiple heroes, which meant the puck, the life stealer, they could always play at a distance, and bounty hunter just escaping on a sliver of HP and. Yeah, like you have such, these are such brawly lineups, and I think Hellraiser is just coming out on top simply because of that last moment. But Aloha Dance Smith, though, getting tracked up. What are you going to do, buddy? There's not the really... only answer here is die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's not really much he can do. And uh, I know sometimes it used to be a chat spam instead of. Uh... Ah, well, it's Aloha Dance. You know, it, a lot of people, when you die like that, it's usually just. They'll, they'll throw out the die, 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 even though it's not pile, I die. That's a... Nah, it's always want to die, right? That's the classic. For... Yeah, that always one's very fly. classic, too. Yeah. That's the CIS one. Yeah. It's a regional thing. <laughs> Delightful. The They've real got the track though, again. Look, Ancient look Apparition. He ends up dead. Always want to fly. We were just talking about you. X as well as the boat comes in on a Funic. They've got the tour and a follow up as well as the Ether Shot coming in from Aloha Dance. A little bit of revenge there as they take out Funic and make a bit of a trade. Serpent Wards on so, bottom, and this is the difference, I would say, between the Shadow Shaman last game and this game, is they are using these Serpent Wards a little bit more objectively. Yeah, it's because they can actually fight around not having to use it as a key kind of team fight spell, and it's because of this code cook. Iceberg currently, the pick was meant to carry the draft, and currently he's carrying the team, and I think Phonic, he's they're, they're kind of getting a bit too big for their boots in terms of where the fights they're trying to take, where... I understand the idea, which is we want to draw a fight bottom, push in top, which means they use a spell bottom. We can then instantly get the mana advantage top and take a tower. The only issue is Funnet gets to a point where he feels it falls a little bit flat. And I like his itemization right now, trying to go for Solar Crest, go to the BKB, but potentially going for maybe an early pipe would have bridged a little bit of the damage coming out from this lineup. And General, General again, Dream Coil. Play. Ice Blast to come over. They've also got Iceberg coming in. They'll get the Kona General to start this off. Now the boat flying through, but it won't land on anybody. Tidebringer avoided with a phase shift in Iceberg. Now needs to be careful as they found Maposhka behind the tier buddy, two. He is in no man's land. No Gloom's back well, Iceberg. That might day. be enough to keep him alive as now Aloha Dance dies and they can't kill the Disruptor. I mean, that is just unfortunate. All right. Yeah, but this this is the whole idea that we just mentioned. Like they they made the move bottom, they they die, but then they instantly get all the the heroes top due to the Chen as well, being able to mitigate that. They control the outpost as well, so they trade a tier one, get a tier two though, and they're still slowly building their lead. If you look at the itemization coming out from Puck and Lifestealer, Puck's going for that Blink Deso, Lifestealer's going for the Maelstrom Halberd. So you're kind of getting the hit, the items that Lifesteader wants, the Puck's also kind of helping him, right? So it's like, you can go for this build, I'll still buy the Deso. So when we combo together, we'll still have that big explosive damage. Lifesteader naturally feels a little bit underwhelming when he doesn't get a Deso in terms of damage output. But Puck picks it up, and off you go. You're, you're, you've now got a free item in your, in your inventory, pretty much. Oh my god, Aloha Dance, he can't catch a break. He'll get the shackle out on the puck. They'll follow that and up with a touring. Well, oh, Iceberg, yeah. Funnick's deep in there. The swashbuckle comes in. It doesn't disarm this bounty hunter. And now they'll look to finish off Aloha Dance. They'll get the track out before he ends up Hold dead. Up. Although, they dropped down the so sentry. Greedy. They've got the chilling touch as well as the cold feet. They should have just thrown the track in. Now they finally <laughs> get it through. And they'll get the kill on the Shadow Shaman. But that almost cost them potentially the bounty hunter. And there's another track kill. So, he stays alive. And, uh, well, you get that extra gold. That money, money. I don't know if you ever watched some uh, WWF back in the day when Shane McMahon used to come out to show me the money. But uh, that's definitely what they're getting showed. 
I've seen enough gifts to, to just feel it out. <laughs> oh, VTune in the bot lane getting tracked up as well. Yeah, Buddy, Bounty this Hunter V Ricky. This is sad as hell to watch. You can't even run away. You think you can, but... Nope. Slip. Slip. Yeah, Kasani's here, Slip. but he's like, e you got this, right, Phonic? Oh, look at it. Oh, yes, the BM. Go for <laughs> Yes. Oh, beautiful Phonic. He knows there's value in this uh, Janata. Just Delightful. always hoping for that extra gold. And does he take the extra gold at 20? That's... I mean, that's a far ways out. He's actually only level 11, but uh, we'll see. When you think oh, about it. Oh, he's on a fly. He's tracked now. They brought in Funnick just for the track and the Janata gold steal. So much tempo being set. Oh, General there in top. What a beautiful little, little, little cheeky little whoop to the side. He just hugged himself in that tree line. Just meant he uh, didn't get seen by the lifestealer, which meant the puck would have been able to come over and do some control. I don't know why I said it like that. That was a weird one, but, you know, we'll, 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 we'll run with it. Kind of losing my mind here. We're off. We're off. <laughs> Popping off. <laughs> so this is what I oh. like about the Solar Crest and then also the Desolator pickup. It makes their yep. lineup very Roachable. I don't know if Roachable yep. is a word. Uh, you can look it up in the dictionary. But I think here, like, yeah, it gives them the opportunity to go for Roach. But the Ice Blast comes in on a three. They'll pop the BKB on Iceberg. Static Storm is placed onto the Ricky. Iceberg getting him a second as they lose Maposhka as well as Roger. And now they lose Roar over as well as the Kofi coming out. I don't know if it's going to be enough for Moe's one to five. They've got the X on a Nyx. They'll pull him back. They've got the Torrent and they'll pop the first life. Funny trying to come in, but he's dusted up. They've got the Serpent Wards down. So they lose three. This is a big problem. They've already lost the Aegis and they can't pop up Nyx to stop that TP. But that is Aegis used and three heroes dying. A good fight there from Fly to Moon as I was just praising Hellraisers. We are cursing left and right. Yeah, I think uh, a small oversight from Hellraisers where. Of course, you can do Roshan really easily. You've got Life Stealer, Bounty Hunter with Solar Crest, you've got the Deso on the Puck. The issue is everyone's in the pit, which means everyone's going to get A blasted, everyone's going to get torrented, everyone's going to get boat stunned. And when your whole lineup is built around the idea that if you get jumped, the Chen's going to be able to mech you, heal you, if all your cores get hit by A blast, you are dust, you're gone, you're out of here. And you're still not the tank into heroes. Like, Bounty Hunter still doesn't have BKB. So if he does get caught by any of these control spells, you're going to get punished. So I think how is they sh go in Roshan perfectly fine. Just the fact that they had every hero in the pit, eh, not so much. So does it affect the entire game plan? Probably not. Because, again, they took a fight at Roshan, got the Aegis. Do they really care that they, don't, they didn't get the Aegis? Eh, sure, whatever. Life goes on, but... Just don't take fights in these choke points on Hellraisers, and they should be uh, plain sailing from here on out. I know the like, change the is uh, not too much from the uh, the Ancient Apparition. Sorry to cut you off, but if he feels no, so much fine. stronger at just a level 1 Ice Blast these days. Like I feel like there, were, it felt like there was a time where Ancient Apparition was like, oh, Ice Blast level 1, whatever, who cares? And even that 2% or I don't know if it's the 2% or just how... Uh, Ancient Apparitions kind of play these days where they play a lot more aggressive and it, it just feels so good early on as he's just level 8. Wow, Maposhka just gets ripped up by General there. And he the buys back. back. Oh, the Dream Coil. It misses. Tricks of the Trade was great there from V2. Now they've got the Ice Blast as well as the Serpent Wards coming in. This is looking poor for Hellraisers, but they look to try to get the kill at least onto the oh. Shadow Shaman. They get Always Wanna or they get Always Wanna Fly's Courier and Aloha Dance. They'll lose Funic and Two fights in a row, Fight Moon look great. Yeah, these uh, whiffing the spells is quite an issue. But could you touch on the A point? I think it's the the skill build of Always Wanna Fly, which amplifies the effect of his Ice Blast right now. He's uh, not maxing Chilling Touch or Kofi, but instead went for the Vortex. Of course, increases your magic damage. You layer that on top of the, the Torrent, of course, if you put that with your Ice Blast as well. So it's a lot of damage, so... Yeah, I think this uh, new age AA just really kind of puts a lot of pressure on these uh, on these heroes. But touching back onto the fight, Hellraiser's going quite sloppy. I think they're not really like they have to get the coil and kill the guy in coil. The issue right now is they whiff a coil, commit to the fight. Life Stealer uses rage running into the fight, which means once he gets to the fight, he's like, ah, what do I do now? I'm uh, I'm dead. So. He's getting a little bit sloppy right now with the Roshan with the second fight. And 
it, it shouldn't be this hard for them to be able to make aggressive moves, but when you make misplay after misplay, it kind of opens up the game. Do you think that they might want to slow it down a little bit and continue to farm? Or are they being uh, aggressive too early? Uh, not at all. I think their, their lineup is built for pickoffs. But oh, as you can my. see here, it's the Manta reveal from Rakim instantly uses call. I'd like to see Funic and, and the boys on Hellraiser get out now. Like, you want to play around your dream call. Like, there we go. Yeah, they are disengaging. Like, it's these multiple missed teamfight spells which make Hellraiser hard to fight. Like, if they just hit them, they can take any fight they want. Like, Bounty Hunter, he can kill pretty much any hero if he continuously right clicks and gets onto the back lines. But if we look at AA, he's got a Ghost Scepter. Shaman, he's got a Ghost Scepter tabbed in. There's going to be a timing where Thunic's going to fall off because he just can't get those continuous right clicks off. 17 seconds to the next coil. I think Funic was spotted there. I think he was the one who ended up blocking that camp, and Kunkka realized that. He knew that he was there, because they sent two heroes bottom immediately. I really like the play coming out from Ricky, though. You can see he uses his Manta always to have one illusion out in front of him, seeing what's happening, and then he plays with the second illusion, which means... Sometimes when you see two two Rickies or two any two heroes at the same spot, like with like an illusion and main hero, you might go, oh, it's just two illusions farming the camp. But just like a safety measure, you you'll see like when he gets into aggressive spots, so here you go, Mantis again, sends one illusion off, plays with the second illusion, which means he's always got the ability to juke with the second illusion, and he's obtaining vision with the third illusion of oh, the the other illusion. Sorry, very very good play. I know Artizi does this a lot. It's something that if you weren't paying enough attention to, you'd miss because it, you know yeah. it's just that you know th th that mindset of oh you know like you said two illusions must be mantis. It's such a mind game that I feel like just the casual viewer may not think about. Mm-hmm. For sure. Gem picked up here for the bounty hunter. I uh, it was bought by Roger. I wanted to say like if that was bought by. Funic, that could be an issue because you really want him to come in and yeah. get this BKB, but he's still dying very quickly. Like I, I find it very scary that Bounty Hunter's got this this gem on him, but I, I'm not sure who else would carry it. I think they're playing for this next big. Like I think they've realized, all right, we're only losing fights because we're just not hitting our spells. If we hit our spells, we could probably win a fight. So I think they're Smoke. not too scared, but. He's a broken. That's an interesting Nick. TP there from Nyx to finish that off. The smoke was broken. They get the dream quote on the two, but now you're without your life steal. You just gotta leave. And Funic in trouble as he's bounced up thanks to the rolling thunder. Blink strike X, tricks of the trade, there looking like a dead Funic, and that's the gem. Yeah, he has died oh so quickly in these fights, and well, he's dead again. Yeah, I think Nyx really is not having a good not having a good game. He just keeps getting picked off in all these fights. From laning phase to the mid game, like his presence has been pretty much non existent. He enters the fight, doesn't really do anything and just dies. So yeah, I think Nyx not having not having the game that he, he, he really wanted. But this is why Shaman's so strong. You take that fight, you get near an objective, you slap the wards down, it unlocks the, the high ground. And the great thing right now, too, is he's got that telescope. He's, you know, about to hit level 15 to have even more of a cast range. Like, Aloha Dance is making things happen from a distance. And, you know, it's going to be from even further away where Hellraisers need to be weary, uh, mm -hmm. you know, coming in to once he hits 15. He did have that keen optic. Now he's got the telescope. Like, Shadow Shaman's happy right now. I didn't expect Hellraisers to make so many misplays, actually. I thought from their first game, they looked like a... Quite a well-oiled team, but the second game showing that maybe they're not as consistent as initially initially four. And they're only down five thousand. It's I think that the the gold lead doesn't really show how dire this game is for them at this point. Like they can't really run at them. Their life that are it's literally a creep at this point. He has Harvard Mjolnir, and he is playing against multiple ghost scepters. A Ricky who can disengage Kunku with BKB armlet like it, this lifestyle can pump out no damage and he yeah he just he just has to push out lanes and farm up and hope that he can get to maybe a basher or uh, just that additional item to get him into the game yeah 
it's a rough one for sure but luckily you do you do have the axe on puck which means if you do hit the coil no he has missed two in the last two fights uh he might be able to um yeah actually do something but trying to play over i think make the make the map wide make the map open take some towers move away from this kind of aggressive nature that Hellraiser have adopted at the start of the game wait for the nit wait for the lifestyle sorry to be a little bit more confident in his positioning and then go from there yeah, it seems like the five on fives right now are not working out for Hellraisers, and that wasn't what they were fighting for in the beginning of this game. They were fighting yeah. for two, three kills, you know, just find a pickoff with track. And now it almost feels like the 5v5, it's just not them. They need to try and find somebody out. They need to force a rotation, then get the pickoff, continue to go for the objectives, it feels like. Because in these five and fives, mm -hmm. nothing's working out at the moment. Yeah. The, another way of looking at it is the bounty hunter if he had that early bkb he'd be the one running in first tanking the damage getting the bkb off and being a nuisance the issue here is he never got to his bkb at a decent timing which meant the lifestealer potentially felt like he had to be the one running into the fight with rage to maybe tank a spell or to just to get into that position but he's your carry and you need to bump out the damage but now fly to moon they get this free roshan they push into two lanes like, sure, you might get a tier 1 tower from it, but yeah, the, the fly to moon just playing up a lot better now. Getting the cheese onto the Ricky, Aegis onto the cooker. Like, look at this man's items AC, BKB, Orchid, Armlet. Like, he's got like 37 armor. This man is a absolute unit. It is so hard to kill him. Twice, that is. Even with the minus armor, it feels like it's almost impossible. Phonic, oh, uh, not the though. spot you want to be in. X with the Ice Blast. Rolling Thunder coming in, and it will get the kill onto this Bounty Hunter who's out of the game once again. And, you know, uh, that, that is just... Uh, how long has he been trying to build this BKV? It feels like For forever. Yeah, from probably about that minute, minute 21, I think, he's had it tabbed in. It just boils down to the a couple missed coils, a couple poor team fights, throwing away Roshan quite like, for no reason. And the fact that Kunker, like I mentioned, every time Bounty Hunter got killed, it was Kunker the one cleaning it up. And Kunker is the guy that you want to have a good game on. So it's all these small factors that kind of build towards Iceberg getting to this ultimate point of <laughs> come at me, bro, and play behind the Serpent Wards. Only Iceberg has to hit high ground. No one else has to come up here. Like, this is the only way that Hellraiser could win a fight right now, is if they overcommitted for a high ground push. Everyone was hitting the towel, for example, and you got that big coil, but Flight Moon aren't going to provide this coil to the, uh, to the, to the lads on Hellraiser. They're playing it really well right now, and they're continuing to just invade the Radiant side where Hellraisers, they are desperately looking to find enough farm to, say, get this Abyssal Blade. And then for the puck, trying to get into the BKB. It's not terribly far away for Kasani. He'll actually look like he's going to pick it up before Funic does, which is a bit of a surprise. But uh, it just, it seems like Bounty Hunter, you were saying Lifestealer is a creep. It feels like Funic's a creep. He has not done much of anything in the last 10 minutes or so. Yeah, they pretty much just fell off a cliff. And same again, Fight the Moon, slapping the bot to, Like, what can you do against this? He's got BKB, Aegis, he's just gonna slap away. You don't even need Serpent Wars to push. Like, you've got note that your offlaner doesn't get to initiate cleanly because he's a bounty hunter. Again, no BKB. Oh, we tracked him, watch out, we see him. Yeah, of course you see him, he's tanky, he wants to be seen, he wants to be in your face. Like, <laughs> and he just, bro, he's manning up against Roger. I mean, nothing's going on there except him getting hit. Ice Blast comes in. Kasani drops 80 seconds. No buyback, though. At least get the kill on Aloha Dance. Funny finally gets one for the first time in 15 minutes, but they lose Nyx as well. Yep. He disconnects. Yeah, they call GG, and we're going to a game three. I mean, it just was clinical from Fly to Moon this game. It's just a little bit upsetting because we, we see the start of this game, and we're like, damn, how is this? You are some tricksters of the trade you've really done this you've really pulled one out the back here with this pick and then you they play well they got good tempo and then funix making good moves they're utilizing the chen and then they get to the point where they actually need to play together they need this lifestealer to actually have a game and i think the combination of kunk again every kill on the bounty hunter the missed coils on park and the fact that lifestealer was pretty much non-existent throughout this entire game just led to the fact that 
they just got rolled over. And I think Iceberg, standout performance from him, he he bossed it. Good laning phase, got that solo kill onto the puck, moved around good rotations to clean up these, uh, to mirror the rotations on Bounty Hunter. But you know, I think really upsetting performance from Nyx. And I think how are they going to change up in game three just to kind of fix this? I think the worst thing for Hellraiser is simply to take this loss and go, God, we did nothing. And then to try and change too many things. I think they had a, a good idea. It's just that execution whew, was very poor at the 20 minute mark. Yeah, it really just didn't seem good for Hellraisers throughout the entire duration. Uh, you know, after that mark. So it, I, I just, it never came together. I feel like Funnick just became just a walking, you know, bounty for Fly to Moon. Uh, yep. And I mean that in the metaphorical sense i guess would be the right word i don't know my vocabulary is not that great but uh we'll you know, it, it yeah, just we'll it, it really seemed like funnick was just there to die and and there wasn't anything he could do and and like you said oh. early in the game you know roger's trying to get the mech off in the hand of god but you're hit with an ice blast it doesn't matter your chen isn't really providing much with the you know the hand of god and the, and the mech and and you're just falling yeah. apart so quickly and nix was dying so fast in these fights mm-hmm the point of this draft is you have the early punishment of the bounty hunter who runs around track as so much damage to AA, Pangolier, and Shaman due to their low armor. And then you move from that into an early Rosham, and then you put the pressure deep into them. You have this Desu pickup on Puck. If anyone comes into your jungle, you can call them, kill them instantly, and you just move as a sweeping motion across the map. The issue is, when they tried to start applying the sweeping motion, they instantly got team wiped at Rosham, which then meant, all right, cool, on the back foot. And then when they tried to take a fight into Fly to Moon, it was the worst fight that we've seen with the, again, I've said it so many times now, the miscoil, Nyx plowing his face into absolute death. And then from that point, those two engagements, your draft is meant to be, we're going to choke you out of your jungle, you have nothing, good luck trying to get back in this game. To, oh, whoops, actually, you control our jungle, we need to split push lanes now. And Bounty Hunter, you're never going to buy your BKB because you're the one getting choked out. So, it, honestly, this was a Hellraiser's game to win. And then they had two fights in a row, big choke, and they just threw the game. But Fly to Moon, again, got to give them props because they played really well. Just Hellraiser's, I think, choked. And on combina in combination with that, Fly to Moon just playing well. It was like, great job, Iceberg, and the boys. Yeah, so we'll go to game three real quick. Hellraisers against Final Moon. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay right there and uh, enjoy some more Dota when we come back. 